Stijn Goossens uit uh, de ICFO. Wat exactly is de ICFO? Uh, ICFO is een instituut uh, waar we do, uh, research doen. We do both from very fundamental quantum optics to a very applied project where we want to uh, bring the technology that we invented at this institute towards the market. Uh, we have recently realized a camera based on uh, uh, sensing technology, light sensing technology that is based on graphene and colloidal quantum dots. And we have integrated uh, the graphene colloidal quantum dot system with a commercially available silicon CMOS circuit. And this was a pixelated array, so we could uh, make a camera, a digital camera with that. What are the shortcomings of uh, today's image sensors that can be overcome by this specific um, graphene um, enabled sensor you're mentioning? Yes, so the shortcomings of today's sensors are um, uh, because they are based on, on silicon technology, uh, they can only capture visible light. So the sensor that you find in your smartphone that, in, that makes your smartphone camera uh, can only take pictures um, in invisible light. When you want to see other types of light, such as UV light or uh, infrared light, it's simply not possible to use your, your, your smartphone to capture this light. And um, the graphene sensor can do this. Basically there are th three components to this approach you are looking at. We have quantum dots, which is the top layer, then there is a graphene layer, and then there is the CMOS layer, which acts like a sort of an infrastructure, I understood. How does exactly do we get a photon into this graphene layer, and how is the readout of this, um, this, this charge happening? So indeed, we um, use the quantum dot layer as the layer to convert the photon, uh, a visible light photon or an infrared light photon, to a charge. Then that charge is sensed by the graphene. So we use the graphene as an extremely sensitive charge sensor. And this um, charge sensor is read out by the under underlying CMOS circuit. So the CMOS circuit contains the amplifiers and the multiplexer circuits and the analog to digital uh, converters to do the further processing. Yeah. If you think about uh, bringing this uh, whole research into a product, will there be in the future uh, a CMOS infrastructure for these sensors? Or will there be different readouts of this uh, charge which is happening in the graphene layer? Um, in the future, we will definitely use the power of the, the C silicon CMOS technology because you simply cannot beat that. It's so extremely advanced. Okay. So um, what we still need to develop is to make graphene at a large scale. At the moment, we have transferred graphene on a single die, so on these uh, single chips. We did that uh, here in the lab that you can see behind me. But we're currently developing in the European project, the graphene flagship, uh, machines that can do the transfer at large wafer scales, such as 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter. So to make a sensor like we just realized and showed in, in our Nature Photonics publication on a large scale, we just need to add another machine that can deposit graphene onto a CMOS wafer. Okay, so that, that is because that is still a challenge, you know, to harvest graphene and to put it into uh, an application. Um, it is a challenge, but it is possible because at the moment you can already grow graphene on 300 millimeter wafers. You can go grow single crystal graphenes. Uh, there are uh, large scale transfer machines. So it's a technological optimization that will definitely happen in the near future. Okay, how long, how long have you been working on this? How long is this research going on? So I, uh, I started working on this uh, camera sensor project in, um, in 2014. So it, uh, it took us um, a bit more than two years to, uh, to realize this, uh, this okay. demonstrator. What was the biggest hurdle in this whole research? Was there a moment that you said, you know, I, I give up, you know, this is not doable, this is not going to work or whatever. What was the biggest hurdle to overcome? Yeah, so as in any um, interesting research project, of course, we had this moment that we, uh, we wanted to give up. But uh, we were sure that it, it would work in the future. and. Um, uh, so, so we continued and in the end we managed to, to do it and, and the moment that we were struggling was, um, was mainly when 
the, the CMOS circuit that we bought from a commercial supplier didn't really match with um, the properties of the graphene pixel. Uh, so for example, the resistance of the graphene pixel was much lower than what the CMOS circuit was optimized for. So we had to um, apply uh, technological tricks to, to match these resistances. And, and then there was a whole list of uh, optimizations that we needed to do to match the graphene with this uh, CMOS circuit. So basically we're coming, we're coming down to uh, Ohm's law in this uh Yes, you, you can say it like that. And, and, but that also means that when we can uh, design our own CMOS circuit, it will be extremely, uh, uh, it will be working extremely well because we can ju just design it for the, for the pixel resistance of the graphene okay. uh, pixels. Yes. Yeah. So in the future we will have um, a special graphene camera which will be able to uh, capture light in a broad frequency range. Why would we like to have this? What, what, what can we do with this? Um, visible light is, uh, is great. We, we can see uh, uh, many different uh, things. We can, uh, can take pictures of the entire world. We can uh, make self-driving cars drive uh, relatively safely. But there are, are limitations. So for example, when, um, when it's night, uh, visible light cameras uh, stop working uh, very well hmm. but at night there's actually infrared light available so with our graphene camera we can still take pictures yeah also um, under foggy conditions self-driving cars cannot drive at the moment because uh, visible light just doesn't penetrate but with infrared light you can see through fog so if hmm. you put a graphene based camera into a self-driving car it can drive even under very difficult uh, uh, weather circumstances. Okay. Some people will say there are already infrared cameras. What is the big advantage of having you know, a graphene camera doing this? So current infrared cameras, they can only see infrared. A graphene camera ca can see both visible and infrared okay. light. So, so you don't need two modules, you can do one. The other uh, main hurdle of uh, applying infrared cameras in, in consumer products, so, such as smartphones or, or cars, is the price. So now quality is everything. What can we expect of the quality of such a camera in terms of you know the resolution and you know the, 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 the speed and the readout of, um, of this camera? So the resolution of this camera will be the same as the, the smartphone cameras that you, uh, you find, uh, find now. So basically uh, limited by the wavelength of the light or the pixel size is limited by the wavelength of the light. So because we can go into the infrared we can see certain signatures of, of material, such as, as food. So, um, food, uh, food that is uh, ripe has a different signature in the infrared that, that, than food that is not ripe. So, based on those signatures, we can, uh, we can detect which food to pick, for example, in the supermarket. And with our graphene camera, we can image these signatures. The graphene is in the canoe. You have to explain, because for a lot of people, graphene is you know, something they've heard about. What exactly is graphene? And what is this wonder material that makes you know, this special image sensors? Graphene is a very special uh, material because it's actually the thinnest material that you can imagine. It's only one atom thick. It's a sheet of uh, carbon atoms organized in a hexagonal uh, lattice. And it uh, is extremely strong, 200 times stronger than steel. But at the same time, it's very flexible and it's transparent or almost transparent. Um, and then it conducts electricity extremely well. Yep. So um, graphene is already, um, it's a pretty simple material. So you, you can transfer it on a, on a silicon chip, but you can also transfer it on, on plastic. And, and then you can, you can make um, transparent sheets that are, uh, are flexible, uh, but that also conduct uh, electricity very well. And, and that is pretty, uh, pretty simple to, uh, to realize actually. Okay. Um, then there is a, a different field that is also based on graphene and other 2D materials and that is um, based on uh, inkjet printing of these, uh, these graphenes and 2D materials where, where you can really build circuits by, by inkjet printing so you can, you can print like uh, field effect transistors or something. Okay, but by just stapling uh, 2D material, yeah, sheets of 2D material? Yeah, other 2D materials on top of each other. Okay. And so I, I can see that uh, uh, as a tool for, for makers at home uh, in the near future. Okay, okay. So you just buy a cartridge online with uh, 
hexagonal bar nitride at the cartridge with graphene, and then you can build your own uh, transistor together in your, uh, in your own okay. space, basically. DIY your own transistor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for this information. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks.